plates, cutlery, pizza boxes, dirty tissues, anything you leave on this coffee table just vanishes overnight. And then sure enough, the next day, it's all gone. It's just vanished. No, she wouldn't have left me. This is what I think happened. I heard her get up in the middle of the night to get a drink or something. She must have fallen onto the magic coffee table and just vanished. Are you insane? No, he's not insane. I've got the same coffee table at home. <laughs> I need to get one of those tables for myself, but I think my wife might kill me. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're gonna be making a small side table for a desk that I'll be building on this channel in the near future. So let's not waste any time and get started with this project. So today's build is gonna be a real learning experience for me, and that's because I'm gonna be trying three things that I've never done before. The first two things relate to this large slab of elm. The first thing is I've never worked with a slab, and the second thing is I've never worked with elm. The third thing relates to the crack on the center of this slab. Now in order to stabilize this crack, I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to try my hand at some bow ties, which I've never done before. So there's a lot of firsts in this project, and that's what this channel is all about. The tagline for this channel is called A Woodworking Journey. So we're gonna go down this path together. And since there's a lot of firsts in this project, this is actually a test project. This is gonna allow me to work with this elm slab for the first time and iron out any kinks that I may have before I move on to the larger project. And the larger project will be an adjustable desk that will perfectly accompany this side table. And this adjustable desk is the FlexiSpot E7B desk frame. Now the nice thing about this adjustable desk is it doesn't come with a top, so you can customize the top to whatever you want. And that desk frame is the reason I purchased this slab. I envision the bottom half of this slab to be used for that desktop. However, this leaves a lot of extra wood for other projects. And it's this upper right hand side of the slab that I think we can get our material for the side table that we'll be making for this desk. But before we do that, I first need to assemble that desk frame so that we can see how much of that slab we'll need for the desk and see what materials left over for that side table. So I'm gonna unbox this frame and assemble it so we can see what we're working with. So first off, I wanna say how impressed I am at how well this FlexiSpot adjustable desk was packaged. Everything was very secure and well protected. Secondly, I really love the fact that there's not a lot of pieces to this. Every piece of the hardware comes in its own pouch and it even comes with its own tool. Not to mention, there's only six steps to this assembly. So I'm gonna throw this together so that we can get the dimensions we need so that we can start on our side table. So here I have the frame assembled of the FlexiSpot adjustable desk, and this thing moves extremely smoothly whether you're moving it up or down. Now the reason that I assembled this was so that I could get the width of this desk. I didn't want to rely on the information out there on the internet as I wasn't quite sure it was completely accurate. So I'll take my tape measure and measure out this frame. And if I take a closer look at the measurement, we're at 43 and 3 eighths of an inch, which is a little bit different than the 43 inches that the internet says. And I wanna have a three inch overhang on either side of this desk. So I'm gonna go for 49 and 3 eighths of an inch. So I need to go back to that slab and measure out 49 and 3 eighths of an inch. So what I'm gonna do now is to take a tape measure, hook it on the edge of this slab and measure up 49 and 3 eighths of an inch on three or four spots. So now that I have a few marks at 49 and 3 eighths of an inch, I'm now gonna manhandle this slab onto the assembly table. With the slab on the assembly table, I now wanna focus on this piece of wood, which will be the tabletop for that side table. Now you will notice a couple of blemishes, but that's okay, cause that's gonna be on the bottom side of the table. So I made three hash marks at 49 and 3 eighths of an inch. So now what I'm gonna do is connect the dots and strike a straight line across the slab. So 
So it's this rough line that's going to allow me to place my track saw onto the slab so that we can cut out the piece of wood we're working with today. Now this slab is about two inches thick, so I'm not quite sure I'll get through the entire slab with the track saw. However, I'm going to give it a shot. With my track saw in place and my depth set at one inch, I'll go ahead and make my first cut. With my first pass made, I've gone ahead and placed an outfeed roller underneath the cutoff so that it gives it support. Now I'll go ahead and make the second pass at the full two inches. And unfortunately, I didn't quite get all the way through, so I'll finish it up with a Japanese pole saw. So now that we have the wood for that side table cut off of that slab, you can see that there's quite a bit of wiggle here, which means that the slab is warped. However, there is some good news. If I flip the slab over and place it onto the table, it's completely flat on the other side. Now this is going to make my life a heck of a lot easier because I don't have a router sled. I do, however, have a drum sander that has a capacity of up to 32 inches. And if we measure that slab from its widest point, it's only about 26 inches wide. But before we start worrying about the top and the bottom of this slab, we need to start taking a look at the sides. As you can see, this slab has got a significant overhang on one side. It also has what I believe is bug damage right on the edge of that overhang. The other side is much cleaner, except for this crotch area on the very end. So I've got a little bit of work cut out for me. The first thing that I wanna do is to remove some of this overhang and get rid of that bug damage. So what I'm gonna do is to take my pencil and follow the grain and mark out where I wanna remove material. Now for this application, I'm just gonna take my jigsaw and follow that line to remove that waste material. So I'm very carefully gonna follow that grain and my trace line to remove the waste material. Now that I have that waste material removed, I now have the slab flipped over and I can begin to remove some of this bark inclusion, which is gonna be an arduous task. So I'm gonna take some time with my Rotex and a foam pad with some 80 grit sandpaper and smooth out that bark. So now that I have one edge of the slab smoothed out, it's now time to take a look at the other edge. And on the other edge is the crotch. And the crotch is so jagged that I'm gonna have to take it off. So I'm just gonna pencil a line where I think I should make the cut to remove that crotch. Then I can once again take my jigsaw and cut that crotch off. That doesn't sound right. With that crotch removed, I now can continue on in smoothing out that other edge. So now that I have both sides smoothed out, I now want to address some of the imperfections on those edges. So hopefully you can see this, but there's a lot of little cracks and divot holes that I want to fill up with CA glue. Once I put the CA glue into those cracks, it'll stabilize those cracks. Once that CA glue is dry, you can sand it off to smooth it out. So if you remember from earlier, I said that I was really lucky that I had one side of that slab flat. This is going to allow me to use my drum sander to flatten out the other side. And since I have an open-ended drum sander, I can sand one side and then flip it around to sand the other side. So I'm gonna do a whole lot of back and forth with the drum sander to get this slab flattened out. Mm -hmm. 
So if you remember, the top side of this table was originally the flat side, but now that I have the bottom side flattened out, I'm now gonna work on the top. And since this is a show surface, I'm gonna pencil all over this material just to make sure that we're sanding it down nice and evenly. Now that we have the show face marked up, let's go back to the drum sander and smooth out this top side. Now that was a little bit time consuming, but I'm extremely pleased with the results. I think it's about time to invest in a router sled. Next up, I wanna cut off the opposite edge of this table, and this is still rough cut from the original slab. And I'm gonna take a measurement at 24 inches and strike a couple of lines on the slab. Then I'm gonna take a straight edge and strike a line. Now the nice thing about cutting this down to 24 inches is it's going to remove some of these smaller cracks on the edge of the tabletop, while still maintaining the larger crack that we're going to stabilize with some bow ties. So I'll once again grab my track saw and cut off the rough edge. Now that I've cut this tabletop down to size, all those smaller cracks have been removed. Now it's time to work on the larger crack, and in order to do that, I'm going to do some dental work. So here I have some small picks that I'm going to use to remove some of those loose fibers from this crack. This is going to clean it up a bit, as well as get it ready for bow ties. Once I have those larger fibers out, I'm then going to take some 80 grit sandpaper and stick it in that crack just to smooth it out a bit. With that crack cleaned out, it's now time to start thinking about the bow ties. Now I envision having three bow ties in this piece and each one having a different size. I'm going to have a small one, a medium, and a large one. And I really want to spice up these bow ties a bit, so I'm going to go with three different species of wood. For the largest bow tie, I'm going to use some walnut. For the medium size, I'm going to use some mahogany. And finally, for the smallest bow tie, I'm going to use some purple heart. Since these are the first bow ties I've ever done, I'm going to use the tools I have, which is the Shaper Origin, to cut out those bow ties. I'm going to start off with the purple heart to make the smallest bow tie. So knowing myself and my propensity to make mistakes, I cut out two of those bow ties and they turned out pretty nice. These are two inches wide, so now I'm going to move over to the mahogany, which is going to be three inches wide. And last but not least comes the walnut, and I'm going to cut the walnut to four inches wide. So now that I have my three bow ties cut out, I think this is about the placement that I want to have. So what I need to do is to lay down some shaper tape so that I can cut out the holes for these bow ties. And this is single-handedly the part of this project that I've been the most nervous about. Once I cut into that slab, the notches for those bow ties, there's no going back. So one thing I did, once I found a placement for these bow ties that I liked, I traced around them so that when I scan my workspace for the Shaper Origin, I'll know exactly where to place those SVG files. And I'm going to load this bad boy up with as much Shaper tape as I can. Well, I'm not going to lie, that was a little nerve-wracking even using the Shaper Origin, but I'm really pleased with the results. Let's go take a look. 
Here you can see how crisp and clean each one of those notches turned out. I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of problems sliding in the bow ties. I do, however, want to sand the bottoms of the bow ties to give them a little chamfer so that they slide in a little easier. With the corners chamfered, I'm just going to add a little bit of wood glue into each one of these notches and then tap each bow tie into place. So with those bow ties seated into place, I'm going to take this opportunity to sand them flush with the tabletop. Since that glue is still a little bit wet, it's going to grab onto any sawdust and cover up any gaps we may have. So while we let the glue on those bow ties cure, we need to take a look at the legs. Let me show you what I got. So these are the legs that I chose to go with. These are 28 inches tall and they're adjustable. Now I purchased these on amazon.com and I'll leave a link to these legs as well as two other legs that come from the same company. Now one thing you'll notice with these legs is they have a lot of holes to attach the legs to the tabletop. In fact, I think there's about eight holes in each leg. Now one thing we have to consider when attaching these legs to our tabletop is wood movement. So we really only can use the four holes in the center. And the reason we can only use those center holes is because the center of the slab won't move as much as the exterior. As we move further out from the center of the slab, the wood movement compounds. But before we add those legs, I'm going to do some sanding so we can prepare for finishing. And I'm only going to sand to 180 since I'm using Rubio. So I'm going to start off with 80 grit, go to 120, and then 180. With everything sanded down, I'm now going to lay out the legs on the bottom of this tabletop. And what I'm looking for here is even spacing of the legs. I think I'd like a 2 inch overhang on either side of the legs. With everything aligned, I now want to take a sharpie and mark out where I want to drill my pilot holes. Then it's just a matter of drilling them out. Next up, I'll clean off the surfaces with an air hose before I start finishing. After that, I'll apply some Rubio with a Scotch-Brite pad, and it's not going to take very much. I absolutely love the color of this elm. That's a beautiful, rich brown that I've never seen in any other wood. The only thing left to do is to add the legs. Well, I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. I love the warm brown color of the elm, and I love these inlays with the walnut, the mahogany, and the purple heart. I also think the modern metal legs complement this rustic live edge table and give it a sense of class. Well, I really appreciate you joining me today on this modern slab table build. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.